Hey reader friends, this is Miss Olson and today I have a nonfiction book for you. It is called Germs Make Me Sick. It was written by a scientist named Melvin Berger who writes a lot of science books for kiddos and it was illustrated by Marilyn Hefner. So we are going to jump in and see if we can find out how come germs make us sick. Hurry, or you'll be late for school. Ruff, rise and shine. Meow. He's sick as a dog. Hmm. You wake up one morning, but you don't feel like getting out of bed. Your arms and legs ache. Your head hurts. You have a fever and your throat is sore. I'm sick, you say. I must have caught a germ. Okay. Everyone knows that germs can make you sick, but not everyone knows how. Germs are tiny, living things. They are far too small to see with your eyes alone. In fact, a line of 1,000 germs could fit across the top of your pencil. There are many different kinds of germs. But the two that usually make people sick are bacteria and viruses. Under a microscope, some bacteria look like little round balls. Some are straight like rods, and others are twisted into spiral shapes. Viruses are far tinier than bacteria. Some of them look like balls with spikes sticking out on all sides. Others look like loaves of bread or like tadpoles. There are some viruses that even look like metal screws with spider legs. Weird, huh? Germs such as bacteria and viruses are found everywhere. They are in the air you breathe, in the food you eat, in the water you drink, and on everything you touch. They are even on your skin and in your body. Um, you should wash your hands before you eat that. Look at him. He got into the cookies, didn't he? Although germs are all around, they do not always make you sick. Many germs are not harmful. Also, your body keeps out harmful germs most of the time. Your skin blocks the germs. As long as there are no cuts or scratches on your skin, germs can't get in. See the defender here? You won't get in. He's stomping on the germs down here. Foiled again. That's why Miss Olson's always on you guys about not picking your scabs off. Your skin blocks the germs. As long as there are no cuts or scratches on your skin, germs can't get in. So until that scab falls off by itself, it's doing a job. It's protecting you, so don't scratch it off early. Anyway, here we go. This is health fair. Your nose helps too. Yeah. It is lined with tiny hairs. The hairs catch many of the germs you breathe in and then they push them back out. The inside of your mouth and throat is always wet. Germs often get stuck there and they can't go any further. That's helpful, huh? She says, looks okay to me. And the dog saying, be very careful. Yet, some germs do slip in every once in a while. Okay, let's say your friend has a cold and she sneezes and germs fly out. A chew! Then you breathe in the air. Some of her germs may get into your lungs, which is why we're all wearing masks right now. Maybe you take a sip of your cousin's soda and her germs are on the straw. Well, a few of those germs may get into your stomach. Maybe you're riding a bike and you fall and scrape your knee. Hope not, but it happens. Germs from the ground may get under your skin. But even when harmful bacteria and viruses get into your body, you don't always get sick. And that is because your body has ways to fight the germs Ruff, that will have to be cleaned thoroughly. Can't argue with the dog. So, how does your body fight back? Glad you asked. 
the white blood cells in your blood go after any germs that sneak in. Usually, these cells will kill the germs before they can do any harm. So if we were looking under a microscope at a drop of your blood, you got white blood cells, you got red blood cells, and these white blood cells nom 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 eat up the harmful germs, which is awesome. Your blood also has special proteins that attack germs, and these are called antibodies. The white blood cells and the antibodies don't always get rid of the germs though. Some of the germs stay in the body and make you sick. Cat thinks this is fascinating. So there's the germs. The antibodies are getting them. So what if the germs in your body are bacteria? Well, they quickly start to multiply. Each one becomes two new bacteria. Then they become four and so on. You know how that goes. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. And in a few hours, there may be millions of bacteria in your body. The bacteria give off waste products. Okay? Some of the wastes are poisons or toxins. These can damage or kill the cells that make up your body. And when enough cells are harmed, you start to feel sick. So you go to the school nurse, there's Nurse Beth. She says, yes, Mrs. Smith, I'm afraid Janie isn't feeling very well. And this little girl says, hey, are you gonna go home? Probably need to go home if you're sick. <coughs> you may have pains and aches, run a fever, or break out in a rash like this kid. You may cough or sneeze or throw up. These are just signs telling you that, hey, there's some cells being damaged or killed in your body. Probably need to talk to your mom about how you're feeling or dad or somebody that's taking care of you. Cat says, he looks like a leopard. Meow. He kind of does. Some bacteria give off poisons that stay close to the bacteria. Bacteria in your mouth are like that. Their poison attacks only your teeth and causes cavities. It does not go to other places in your body. Dentist is saying, too many candy bars, Nancy. Hmm. Ear aches and boils on the skin can also be caused by bacteria whose poisons or toxins stay just in one place. Hmm. Other bacteria give off poisons that can move around in the body. One kind of bacteria lives in the lungs, but it gives off poisons that can be carried around in the blood. These bacteria may give you a headache or a sore stomach. So Kat's going to describe this to us. Kat says, <clears throat> meow, the heart pumps the blood through the lungs and to all parts of the body. That's called our circulatory system because it circulates. The mice are saying, how did he get so smart? Mm, Tiger's smart too. He says, that boy looks sick. Even Papa says, you don't look too well, Jeff. Still other bacteria have poisons in their outer coats. When they touch different cells, their poisons can hurt or destroy them. And as the cells die, you start feeling sick. Yeah, he doesn't look like he feels good. He probably needs to go home. So what if viruses get into your body? Viruses are different from bacteria because they don't give off poisons. What this happens is when each virus forces its way, here's the virus, when it forces its way into the body cell, it disappears for a while. <coughs> and for a while, nothing seems to be happening. And then suddenly, the virus kind of breaks out of the cell and hundreds of new viruses go tumbling out. Each virus finds another cell to dig inside, and then these cells pop open and more viruses pour out, and soon there are just millions of viruses in your body, and that's how they spread. And this little dude says, no wonder we feel sick. The viruses spread out, and as they do, you feel worse and worse. Viruses bring you colds and the flu and measles and mumps and chicken pox and lots of other illnesses. This mom, oh look, they're bringing her flowers. That's nice. 
She's waving to him from the window. Mom says, Jenny will be out to play in a few days. Though bacteria and viruses can make you sick, you usually begin to feel better after a day or two. Your body has beaten back the germs. Because that's what our bodies do. Because they're awesome. At times, though, you feel very sick. Or you stay sick for days, and then you should go see the doctor. Doctors try to find out which germs are making you sick. This is kind of an old book, and all of the doctors are these old white guys. Doctors can be women. Doctors can be black people and Asian people and Spanish people and Indian people and all kinds of people, too. The illustrator here wasn't very imaginative, though. Anywho, then you should see a doctor. Doctors try to find out which germs are making you sick. What hurts? They ask. Let's take a look. The mom's saying, he's just not himself, doctor. Doctor says, we'll soon have him feeling fine again. And he's probably a really good doctor. He's just not the only kind. Uh-oh, here's somebody from a lab. She says, the doctor needs this as soon as possible. Hmm. When this guy came in feeling sick, the doctor must have had someone take a sample of blood to the lab. Let's say, see what's going on here. Perhaps they swab your throat with cotton. Then they send the cotton with the germs on it to a lab. Or they may take a few drops of blood from your fingertip or arm, and that goes to the lab to be tested. Your doctor gets a report from the lab. It tells whether the germs are bacteria or whether they're viruses. If bacteria are making you sick, the doctor usually prescribes some kind of drug, and the drug will either kill the bacteria or stop them from growing. So here she's calling the pharmacy to give them the prescription, and the pharmacist says, yes, doctor, we'll have it ready to be picked up. Good deal. Pharmacists, pharmacists are often doctors, too. Doctors do not yet have drugs to cure diseases caused by viruses, but they can give you shots to prevent some of these diseases. So she's going in to get her vaccination shots, and mom's saying, it's okay, Sarah, and the nurse is saying, this is just going to take a minute, but it's going to keep her well for a long, long, long time. If you do get sick with a virus, the doctor may give you some medicine anyway. It won't cure you, but it'll help you feel better, or it may protect you from a bacteria that might make you even sicker. So here, there's some juice. He's got to take that pill. That's a big one. Dad says, just swallow it down. Meow. Cat says, it's so big. Sometimes they are big. Sometimes people call those horse pills because they look like the size of a pill that a horse might take. When germs make you sick, your doctor might tell you to stay in bed. Bed rest makes it easier for your body to fight the germs. But so do eating and drinking healthy foods and drinks. Let's see, mom's bringing him some cereal. Looks like some pudding or something. Oh, some little flowers. Let's see. Puppy says, the kids want to know when you're coming out. I see your feet. I don't see anything else. <coughs> Once you are well, you want to stay that way. And there are lots of ways to keep healthy. This teacher's saying, come along, girls. So let's look at this big bulletin board. It says, rules for good health. Number one, stay away from anyone with a cold or the flu. Number two, wash your hands with soap and warm water to get rid of germs. We know how important that is, don't we? Number three, eat good, healthful food. Four, brush your teeth after meals. Five, get plenty of rest. Six, do some exercise every day. Seven, visit your doctor and dentist regularly for checkups. And eight, be sure to get the shots you need. Kid says, makes sense to me. Probably none of those are news to you. You probably knew all of those already. So hopefully you have got the tools that you need to keep yourself healthy. Good job, kids. Germs do make you sick sometimes, but you can help yourself be as fit as a fiddle all the rest of the time. Well, that was interesting. Hope that gave you some good heads up on how germs in your body work.